Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now before I begin, Hemiway is offering $50 off on this model. That is a bonus they have given you guys for subscribing and watching my content, so pat yourselves on the back, you've earned it. I've got the link and code in the description if you want to check it out. Hemiway is a relatively small company with three bikes to choose from, all around the $1,500 price tag. Newer companies like these keep on impressing me because they're trying to make a mark in the biking community by producing high quality products without a high quality price. Hemiway has done just that with their all-terrain electric fat bike. The look alone is very impressive with its huge 4-inch fat tires and stocky 72-pound 6061 aluminum frame. Now, I'm not a small guy by any means, yet when I hopped on, I felt pretty small and a little intimidated. The weight did take a minute to get used to, especially when turning. It seemed to pull more than I was used to with lighter bikes, but it didn't take long to adjust and after a while, I liked it better and felt more stable. Rocks and drops on the trail have rattled me pretty good in the past, but were more bearable with the cruiser. The fat tires seemed to punch through anything I threw at it, and the front alloy suspension fork, which can be locked and adjusted, helped in dampening small drops and bigger rocks. Now don't get me wrong, it's still very bumpy, just not as bad as you'd think. I took this on some green and blue trails and felt fine, but definitely would avoid blacks. And as far as cruising around town, it would be hard to find a smoother ride for this price range, especially with a saddle as comfortable as this. Now let's talk about power because the cruiser has plenty of it. The 750 watt brushless gear hub motor, powered by a 48 volt Samsung battery, has no speed rating. So I busted out my radar gun, which was a little finicky that day, but tagged me around 25 to 28 miles per hour. The bike's LCD screen was displaying about 26 to 27, so about the same as my radar gun. The highest speed I saw on the bike that day was 29, which was a little too fast for my taste, even though I felt the bike handled it very well. It is quite smooth at high speeds through some rough terrain. The only time I felt a little nervous and had the tire slip out on me was going through some sandy patches. The acceleration is almost too much. I hit 24 miles per hour on this short stretch. It makes the bike fun to ride through the straights and slight curves, but I wish there was a setting to decrease the power for tighter turns and rougher trails. I had the pedal assist set at level 1 out of 5 and felt the power was still too much at times, especially when hitting small sections of black trails in between the green and blues. But the power does cut off as soon as the brakes are applied, so I was able to navigate the different types of terrain fairly well by just tapping the brakes. The throttle can be used in unison with pedal assist and isn't dependent on the pedal assist level. The throttle is always set to full power. I like that because I always had extra power if needed for steeper or trickier parts of the trail. There's no delay either. Once the throttle is turned, the power increases almost instantly. Now once the throttle is released or you stop pedaling, the power takes about a second to stop. The range of the cruiser is marked at 35 pure electric or 60 on pedal assist. I spent almost two and a half hours on some green and blue trails with a small section of black and had the bike on pedal assist level one and two and got just over 21 miles. The bike recorded 23.8, so over two and a half more than my app. I didn't think I was going to get any workout, but that wasn't the case. Even on pedal assist level two, I still felt a good amount of pressure, especially through rougher terrain with a lot of stop and go. And then just handling the bike, dodging rocks, lifting up over cracks and bumps, over time, it gets the heart racing a little. Nothing like a normal bike would give you, but you do get a little exercise. It's not all entertainment and sightseeing. Now I'm 180 pounds, the bike's weight limit is 350, so the range is going to change quite a bit depending on the type of terrain, pedal assist level, and your weight. I will say this bike is definitely built for green and blue trails. The black section I hit I had to get off a few times and use the walk assist mode. It's just a lot of weight for really bumpy terrain and hard to maneuver through. Now you think for being such a big and bulky bike, it wouldn't be that good at climbing, but that's not the case. It's rated up to a 35% hill. I measured this hill in a previous video and know it's just over 34%. This first run was with zero momentum starting at the bottom of the hill. The second run, I was going about 10 miles per hour when I started to climb. Now towards the top, I really started to feel some resistance even on the lowest gear of the seven it offers, but it gives just enough juice to get you to the top. Coming down the same hill, I hit the dual Tektro disc brakes, which stopped me at the steepest part of the hill. I really liked the brakes, had no complaints there. 
I could stop nice and smooth and pretty quick on some sand and gravel. I also like the rubber pad they placed on both alloy levers for a better grip. I was a fan of the LCD screen which is plenty big and can easily be seen in the day. It's very easy to navigate by pressing the info button to scroll through average and top speed, ride time, odometer, and trip odometer. There's also an LED light with three brightness levels when riding at night. And speaking of night, the cruiser also comes with a head and tail light. The cruiser takes six to nine hours to recharge. The battery can be taken out with the set of keys they provided and charged on the go. There's also a battery indicator on the battery. One of my favorite features, just because it looks cool, is the rack with a wooden surface. I took my 90 pound nephew for a ride the other day and had no problem getting around. They've also added a bell, and the bike shuts off automatically in 10 minutes if left on. Hemiway says their cruiser can be ridden in heavy rain, but it's not recommended. It has a two year warranty and free shipping in the US, and comes with a hat and a multi-tool. Overall, I was a fan of the Cruiser. It's a solid bike for the price. The power and the ability it has to climb rocks and hills is impressive. It does take a few hours to get used to and the power may scare you a little at first, but once you get over that, good times are ahead. If you're looking to pick something affordable up for some green and blue rated trails, this would be a great option. So that wraps up the review. Don't forget about the $50 off link in the description. Hopefully you enjoy the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.